Glory to God. Good morning. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to exalt the name of God this morning. I want to read from 1 Peter 5. Amen. And I want to make a declaration this morning on behalf of Generation Z. Hallelujah. The world calls them Generation Z. But the Lord told me, we can call them Generation Z, but just know that the Z stands for Zoe. Hallelujah. That Zoe means life. Hallelujah. Not just any regular life, but a God life. Hallelujah. So our declaration this morning is that Generation Z is declared. I decree it. Hallelujah. In the earth realm that Generation Z is Generation Zoe. As our pastor said this morning in prayer, we are exalting the name of God. God, we are lifting up our children today. I decree and declare victory over Generation Z, Generation Zoe. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. This morning, the Lord woke me up and I heard control, alt, delete. I kept hearing it. Control, alt, delete. And if you understand technology, when your computer system may freeze or your computer system needs to be rebooted or restored, you can press three buttons, control, alt, delete. And the Lord said to me, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, control, alt, delete, hallelujah. First Peter and five says, the elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. Glory to God. And when the chief shepherd, hey, somebody, shall appear, Ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Mm -hmm. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him, Amen. for he cares for you. Yes, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, mm -hmm. as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Who resisted steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world? Oh, God. But the God of all grace, hallelujah, the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that, ye have suffered a while. Make ye perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. Mm -hmm. To him be glory yes. and dominion yes. forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I want to remind you that under the glory of God, under the presence of God, control, alt, delete. God is in control. Hallelujah. Amen. God can alter your situation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God can delete some things, can delete some people that cause you tribulations, that bring you into trials. But the word of God says, hold on. Yes. <laughs> For those who have suffered a while, that God will establish us. He will make us perfect. He will strengthen us and he will settle us. It's in the name of Jesus that I honor our Father today. Glory, hallelujah. Glory Amen. 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 That's his name. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for who you are. God, we thank you for what you want to do in this service. Lord, we surrender our will. We turn it over to you, Lord. Use us as vessels, God. We just thank you that every need will be met. In Jesus' name, we glorify you and we give you praise. Somebody shout hallelujah and glory to God. Yes. This song says our God is an awesome God.
And that's the move without a shadow of a doubt that there's nobody like you, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless your name this morning, oh God.
to accept God, to surrender to God, to let him have his way. Hallelujah. I give him glory and honor and praise on today. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Every time. 
So, Father, you said that we've got a name that's above every name. Every name. And at the mention of the name Jesus, you said every knee got to bow, every tongue got to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Thank you for the woman of God who reminded us that cancer cannot stand to Jesus. I thank you right now, God, whatever we're going through right now, that you are giving a testimony out of our lives. Thank you for my testimony. It doesn't feel good, but I thank you for the valley, because in the valley I know that you are with me. Thank you, God, that you're keeping your word you promise never to leave me, nor forsake me. So, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. There's a lot going on in the world. But, Father, I thank you that we got the answer to everything. And the answer to everything is Jesus Christ. So, Father, I thank you. I thank you for your son, Jesus. And, Father, we thank you today. Now, Father, I pray as this service go on, God, in somebody's living room, they need you to show up. Somebody needs you to show up with their kids right now, God. Somebody needs you to show up in their bodies right now. Somebody needs you to show up in their mind right now. I speak right now to the atmosphere. Go down to Cleveland. Go down to Cleveland, Texas. It's a young girl waking up this morning without her mother. Father, what the devil meant for man, you are a God that will turn it around for our good. So, Father, I speak over her life. Something good is going to happen. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus. We don't have the answers to everything. And we can't get stuck in the why. But, Father, we know, God, that everything has to line up with your word. So, Father, we thank you today. Somebody's at their last meal right now. I see right now our mother is at her last meal right now. But, Father, would you show her that you are a provider right now in the name of... I wish I had somebody would help me pray right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we need you. We cry out to no other name that we know. So we call on the greater and that name is Jesus Christ. Now Father, I pray right now that your power is taking over the atmosphere. Something's changing. As I was driving here this morning, God asked me a question. He said, do you believe I can do it? John, I, I, I baffled because he asked me again, do you believe I can do it? And I said, yes, I believe. He said, well, act like it. If somebody missed it right there. God asked me a question. He said, do you believe I can do it? And, and I said, yes, I do. And he told me to act like it. So I want to tell you, all this prayer you, you've been doing, all this fasting, all this time you've been spending in church, God wants to know one question. Do you believe I can do it? Yeah, yeah. Do you believe I can make a way out of no, no, no way? Do you believe I can heal your body? Do you believe I can bring peace to your mind? Do you believe I can take care of your kids? Then the question is, why ain't you acting like it? So as we lift our hands one more time, Let's go back to that song one more time. Let's go back to that song one more time. Somebody say, act like it. Act, act like you serve a God who specializes in things that are impossible. Act like you serve a God who never sleeps nor slumber. Act like you serve a God who's got healing in his hands. Come on, act like you've got a God. He knows the end of it. While you at the beginning, God's already celebrating your end. He said, I'm going to give you a respect of it. And I want somebody to say again, something good is coming out of this. Come on, teacher. Come on, teach, teacher. Something good is going to come out of this here. Come on. Come on, church. The real church is not the building. The real church is in you. So guess what? Come on, you. You're going to be all right. Represent God. Come on. At the mention of his name, just a little bit more of that. I 
draw all your family members in. Come on, share. Let people know that the word is coming. Let's get in on this. So what we're going to do is we're going to declare. We're going to speak and ask God to release the rain. The rain, the joy, the peace that we're calling on. We know that God has everything that we need. And we just said you can have whatever you like. So we're asking God to release it on today.
all you gotta do right now is just receive it. Father, I pray that today 
It's through the word of God yes. that your people become better. You said everything else will pass away. Yeah. But the only thing would be left is the word of God. And Father, I thank you for the word. There's power, there's healing, there's deliverance, there's prosperity, there's everything we need is in your word. Because you are the word. And I thank you, Father, that the word abides in me. And I thank you, we've already sung it, because the word is inside of me. I can have whatever I want, God. Because you said, God, you wouldn't keep no good thing from me. So I want you in your household. I want you to declare this. It's already done. <laughs> Come on, open up your mouth. See, it's already done. So, see, sometimes you got to drown out what the enemy says. You got to drown out what you see. It's already better in your life. Amen. Come on, let's say it one more time. Everybody say, it's already better. It's already better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how, how do you know it's already better? Because let me tell you something, when you go through something, when you can get to the point that you say, I will bless the Lord, and all I was saying to two people to help me right now, that's made up your mind that I will bless the Lord at all times. His presence shall continually be in my mouth. Come on, I want somebody to open up your mouth and say, I trust the Lord. just saying something, throw something out of somebody else. Most of the time when I'm preaching, it's something that God has already spoken to me. Yeah. And, and, and just the other day, God said these words to me, and it really, really, really blew my mind. He reminded me that I am not my own. All right, all right. Amen. Yeah, amen. I don't expect many shouts right there. Yeah. I want you to make sure you understand that you are not your own. You belong to God. 
And let me tell you something, God has put a deposit in you, and God expects a return. Amen. Amen. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, what can I render to God for all of his benefits? Don't take it for granted you woke up this morning. Don't take it for granted that you are closing your right mind. Somebody lost their mind. So I want to remind you again that you are not your own. And one thing I want to articulate to people, nobody should tell you how to praise your God. Come on, man. Now listen, that's, somebody said that's personal. Because, you know, can't nobody tell it like you tell it what God has done for you. Amen. So let me tell you something. I was created. Somebody said I was created. I was created to give God worship and praise. I was created to honor his name. Amen. The Bible says, I lead you in the path of righteousness for my name's sake. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Your name means nothing. That's right. Oh. But God wants us to protect his name. Yeah. If you are a child of God, I want to help you today. I want to remind you, you are not your own. Amen. Amen. You can't tell God what you're going to do and what you ain't going to do. The Bible says that every knee has to bow. Yes. Every tongue has to confess. Yeah. And let me tell you, just in case somebody didn't tell you, God can have another you in a moment. Uh. So I'm going to tell you, if you were created to worship God, why are you being so distracted? Because let me tell you something. When I think, see, it's not a cliche. cliche. When I think about how great God is, yeah. see, I'm going to tell you how you, you get a praise. When you look back over your life, yes, uh, I wish I had somebody up in here. Yeah. When you look back over your life, where God has brought you from and what God has protected you from, there ought to be a hallelujah in your spirit. Yeah. Some of us, I can't help it. Every time I think about the greatness of God and he loved me when I didn't love myself, he covered me when I was out of the safety of his covering and he still protected me anyway, something on the inside. And it's not predicated on how people feel about you. See, let me tell you something. Whether you say amen or not, me and God still going to roll. See, 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 I can't understand this new way, church. Your, 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 your worship and your praise is affected by other people. But I tell people like this, you didn't wake me up this morning. You didn't give me strength. You didn't put food on my table. So guess what? I moved the distractions out the way. I was created to give him worship. I was created to honor him. And let me tell you how you honor him. You honor him by your life reflecting him. And I want to say, I want to ask you a question. Is your life reflecting him? Because when people see you, they shouldn't see all the outsides. And for all you who put all your time on cutting yourself up, weaving yourself up, dressing yourself up, shoes matching this, shirt matching your shoes, the purse matching your dress, but what is your heart matching? I, I just want to let the Holy Ghost kind of speak today. Well, why, why is it everything is matching, but, but, but your heart is not matching what's in these six and six books? And some of us, you, you, you owe God more than what you're giving him. I can't give him enough praise. I can't say hallelujah enough. I can't say thank you enough. Because when I look what he did this, then he did that. Then he did this, then he did that. He did this and that. And he did both of them at the same time. He covered me through this and that. So I, I got to make sure I understand this. Because see, some of us, we have these attitudes as if we're doing God some kind of favor. Come on. And I want you to know today, if I never said, you're not doing God a favor at all. Come on now. Because
because the Bible says, if you don't give me what I deserve, woo, I feel like preaching up here. If you don't give me what I deserve, my, he said, the rocks will cry out. I'll make the trees start crying out. I'll make the dog cry out. See, God doesn't need, see, it's an honor for us to be able to worship him. So I want to make sure, I'm, I'm closing, I'm closing, I'm closing. Let, let, let's go to Revelation. Let's go to Revelation. Let's go to Revelation real quick. 4 and 11. Now listen, if you can't find Revelation, come up here let me put my hands on you real quick. <laughs> it's the book we're living in right now. My God, my God. Revelation 4 and 11. It says, you are worthy, our Lord and our God, Amen. to receive what? Glory, Amen. honor, Amen. and power. Woo. And listen, listen. God wants glory, uh -huh. he wants honor, uh -huh. and he wants power. For you created what? All things. I'm going to say it one more time. You created what? All things. I'm going to say it one more time. You created what? All things. And by your will, they were created and have their what? Being. Amen. 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 So as you take your seats, uh, just, just touch your neighbor. Uh, we don't have no neighbor to touch, so touch your imaginary neighbor beside you. Amen. And, and say, you are not your own. You are not your own. Okay. Uh, I, I want to start out by saying this. The Bible says that one day all people will bow down to the law. And no matter how powerful somebody thinks you are, guess what? At the end, we got to lay our crowns down at his feet. Because there's only one king. Somebody say one king. One king. In heaven. And he alone is worthy of the glory, the honor, and the praise. The honor belongs to him. Now, if I'm going to honor him, I've got to respect him. i got to reverence him. I got to put him beside nobody else. So I've got to understand that I was created to give him worship. I'm gonna, come on, somebody say, I was created. Somebody say, I was created. So let me tell you something. We are doing a lot of things, and they are good things, but they are not necessarily God things. Because God say, if you're going to truly worship me, You've got to worship me in spirit and in truth. That means to tell me that if you ain't in the right spirit, you can't worship God. And just because you're in the building don't mean you're giving God oh, come on. I'm not giving him real worship. So I've got to understand I am not my own. I belong to him. And we're spending too much time Dressing the outside man up. But the inside man is dirty, nasty, and filthy. So we camouflage ourselves to look good. But God told me to tell you he's not receiving that. What do you think the Bible says? Nothing but the pure heart is going to see God. So we've got to make sure that we understand that we are not our own. I'm not here just to be here. Because the scripture says that God inhabits the praises of his people. So what kind of praise are you giving God? Come here, attention here. Because too many times we are so distracted about what's going on on the outside. And God say, well, I'm trying to say something on the inside. See, we're worried about tomorrow. And the Bible says tomorrow will take care of itself. So I've got to understand. I am not my own. Somebody have to say, I'm not my own. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. And we're almost done here. 1 Corinthians 6 and 19 to 20. It says this. Do you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is what? In you. Whom you have received what? From God. And you are not your what? Own. I'm going to say it one more time. 
say it again. There it is right there. You are not your own. This is for you. You were broke with a price. Therefore, glorify God with your body. I feel the Holy Ghost with that. It says you are not your own. You were broke with a price. Glorify God in your body. How do I glorify God in my body? I'm going to give you five ways that we glorify God with our body. Number one, number one, number one. So how do I honor God? How do I honor God? First of all, if I'm going to glorify God, if I'm going to honor God, I honor God with my time. Somebody say time. The question to you, how are you using your time? Amen. Time is not your friend. Because let me tell you something about life. Life is a vapor. You are here one moment and go on the next one. Lord, teach me. Teach me how to honor you. Teach me how to reverence you. Because if I'm going to honor God with my time, then I've got to control my time. I can't spend all my time looking at crazy stuff. I've got to get in my word. I've got to pray. I've got to call on the name of God. I've got to see what he says in his word. It's quiet in this house. So the question is, since you've got all this time now, how are you spending your time? Are you spending your time fussing and fighting with people? Are you spending your time only on you trying to build you up so everybody can see how wonderful and good you look? How are you spending your time? The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Come on. Do not lose time. Uh, I was looking the other night. Uh, someone sent me this uh uh, message from this young girl who had an experience with God. And she said she had got caught up in the heavens and she saw this big old clock. And she said, God, what's the clock about? She said she saw the minutes and she saw the seconds. But God did not show her the hour. Wow. Listen to me. Time is not your friend. Today you hear my voice Heart not your heart. God has given all of us time to change. It's time to reevaluate ourselves. Come on here. It's summer, winter, and spring, and you still not saved. You can tell everybody else what to do, but you can't take this word and apply it to your own life. My God. My God. My God. Baby, baby, we've been hearing these good sermons. That's telling us how wonderful we are. And, and, and we, nobody's telling us that one day we got to stand before God. Yeah. Right. Somebody, somebody, somebody say, it's time, it's time, it's time. It's time. See, see, what about God? God is the kind of God. He don't tell you, I'm going to meet you next week at 3 o'clock. He said, no, 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 no nobody. Yeah. And that's why when I looked at her, I said, she's been in the presence of God. Because it lines up with the scripture. Nobody knows the day or the hour. When God calls your name. You ever play hide and go see? People hiding. Ready? Ready enough? Here I come. And God is just like that. You can't run. You can't hide. You can't cover yourself up. When God calls your name, you got to move. Right. Amen. See, see, I gotta say this because we've been hearing all these wonderful sermons, and nobody ever told you that one day you're gonna die. Amen. Uh, uh, excuse me, Facebook. I, I apologize for all the preachers who never told you that there's one appointment you can't break. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can break the nail appointment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can break the doctor's appointment. But when God calls your name. That appointment can't be broken. Amen. So if I'm going to honor God, I've got to honor God with my time. Come on. Amen. Time Amen. is now. Come on. Can't you tell the seasons are changing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on. Are you using time if you're still in the same spot you were last year? Come on. My God. Come on. You, you told God. If he, if he was in trouble, if it was a time and season, you were in trouble. You told God if he brought you out of that, you would never go back again. And here you are right back in the same old. The 
today, you would hear my voice. Harden not your heart. As I go to the next one, I'm going to say this. Nobody wakes up in the morning and say, I want to die. Nobody wakes up and say, I want to be in an accident. Nobody says, I want to be shot by somebody. This is a sin sick world. And bad things sometimes happen to good people. So I want to tell you that if you want to honor God, you got to honor God. Somebody say, with my time, with my time. And then, 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 if I'm going to honor God, I've got to honor God with my talent. Somebody say, my talent. talent. These are God given gifts. Huh. Let me teach this for a minute. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. Amen. Amen. Come on, now listen, 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 man, listen at this here. What am I doing with my talent? Let me tell you something. God has placed something inside of you. And he has spent a return on what he placed. He gave you that talent. If you can sing, guess what? Sing for God. Only what you do for God is going to be counted in the end. I want to teach this because some of us are not being good stewards over our talents. Come on. Where your heart is is where your treasure is. The gift that God has given you, if you put play, but make sure you're playing unto God. So whatever gift it is, why, why, why are you angry? Why are you upset? Let, let me tell you something. Some of you have a gift with your hand. And let me tell you something. Don't let your mouth disqualify your hands. Oh, Y'all like that kind of thing. Let me tell you something that I learned. How God chastised me. God told me one time I was in a situation. And, and guess what? I was right. But God said, you're wrong too. Because let me tell you what. When you go through tests with people, God said the test is not on people. The test is on you. How are you responding to your tests? Because let me tell you something. When you are gifted from God, case nobody didn't tell you, you're going to be attacked. Yeah. Yeah. When you're gifted from God, folks going to have some stuff to say about you. Yeah. When you're really gifted from God and make a difference, folks look at you strange. Yeah. And guess what? When folks see you do something wrong, you can do 50 things right, but do one thing wrong. And guess what? They're going to focus. They're going to focus on that one I wish I had. I wish I had. I wish I had somebody could be honest. I thought you was a pastor. I am a pastor. Come on. Come on. So let me tell you something. If you have a gift and it's from God, it's going to be attacked. Read your Bible. When Jesus was baptized, the Bible said he was led into the wilderness to be what? Tempted by the devil. Your gift will come under attack. My God. I don't know why God got me there. That's from about three people here. Your gift will come under attack. Amen. And, and this is going to blow you away here. Y'all excuse me. I'm talking to these 12 people here. And guess what? Guess what sometimes the attack comes from? The ones you love the most. The ones you feed. The ones you give money to. The ones you, you pick them up. You, oh, baby. Sometimes it's your whole spouse. Sometimes people can see you in the glory, but they can't see you in the struggle. And I wish I had somebody would open up their mouth and say, I love God, but the struggle that I'm going through is real. Paul said, the good I want to do. Yeah. I, I don't do that. And that I don't want to do, I end up doing it. And he cried out. I couldn't find no help from nobody else. That was keeping tally of everything I did wrong. 
who can help me? I'm pouring out to everybody else. I'm giving to everybody else. I'm taking off people who don't even appreciate me. My own kids sometimes don't pop at me. Who can help me? I'm so glad to know that I got a secret closet. I can go in my closet and tell God, oh my God. Your praise is different from my praise. You don't know what I'm going through. I'm praising God because sometimes when you're a child of God, sometimes you want to get some people straight. I'm tired of holding my peace. I'm tired of being the one always saying I'm sorry. And then God said, wait a minute. I gave you a gift. Yeah, now. I want to help somebody. Yeah. The only thing that keeps me humble, I know the gift came from God. Yeah. 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 And he says this in my mind. This is what keeps me humble because sometimes I want to get some folks straight. John, he says stuff like this here. He said, I've given you a gift to much is given. Yeah. Hearts on that. So much is given, much is required. And sometimes you gotta look at the devil, say, I would get you straight, but I'm doing what's required right now. It's required that I be quiet. It's required that I don't come to your house. It's required that I don't be around you. Because I don't want to mess up his name. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's real, real good, so, so I got to understand that, that God gave me a gift, and I got to protect the gift. And, and, and that's why God tells you that, that if you're going to protect the gift because you got a great gift, how can two or more walk together unless they agree? Listen, we got we to really dig into this word because my gift is so powerful, it's so potent. And God don't want me to be around people who don't want to agree with the word. Yeah. Yeah. Now listen here. I didn't say we can't be friends. We can't say hello. But we can't walk together. Uh -huh. <sighs> Come on, Honda. Kickstart three hundreds on that. There are some people because of the guilt inside of you, God will not let you walk with. Yeah. And let me tell you something. One thing that is required of every believer, the Bible says that God lives inside of you. Yeah. And let me tell you something. If he lives inside of you, then guess what? If you allow him to operate out of you, you won't be in the mess you're in right now. He says something like, lean not to your own understanding. Yeah. He tell you that's a lie right there. Because the Bible says, I lie when I tarry in the outside of God. If God is in you, you can call a lie, lie. Amen. Oh, y'all part of me. I need, I need my thoughts on it here. Okay, okay, we're almost done. How do I honor God? I, I honor God. I honor God with, with my temple. Say, with my temple. With my temple. This means my body. So if I'm going to honor God, I'm not my own. I've got to know that I don't belong to myself. And let me tell you this here. I'm going to tell you this here. I believe this. Some people are dead shouldn't be dead. Wow. I'm going to say it one more time. Wow. I said some people are dead that shouldn't be dead. Yeah. But let me tell you something. If you don't take care of this too, yeah. it's possible God can have a whole lot for you to do. Yeah. Yeah. Because you won't take care of this too, guess what? You leave here before your time. I'm talking to a person today, just got through the stroke and all of that, and got a high blood pressure. And, 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 and you know, when they was in the hospital, see, I, 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 I'm the type of pastor, my, my prayers are, are too strong and potent to be wasting my time on people who don't want out. When they was in the hospital, they were humble. I'm going to do this. I'm going I'm to represent God. I'm going to get my body together. But all oh, when they got out. Back eating cheesecake and doing all this kind of stuff. Just eating all kinds of doctors say your blood pressure. I, I don't want to hear that. Mm. What, what you just said, you want to die. Mm. Warning comes before. Your body is the temple. Come on. 
Somebody say it's the temple. Yeah. It's what the Holy Ghost is encased in. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Come on, how does the temple look? Mm. How does the temple sound? Mm. And how does the temple get over there? Mm. Oh. oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> how, how does the temple get in this situation? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't get no amen. Yeah. With all this Holy Ghost, with all this tasha, ta, 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 with all this conference, with all this strategy, how did you get depressed? Wow. Wow. Come on, Elijah, how did you get in a cave? Wow. Wow. Why are you running from Jezebel? Come on, how, how, how did you get here? How, how did we get here? I'm I I, I going to preach today. How, how do we get here? How do we get here? How do we get here to where people are fearful? How do we get here when, 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 when scientists, and, and I believe that God uses scientists sometimes no more. How do we get here when they say that this thing is dangerous? And it's, but people say, now we want out. My God, my and let me tell you something. Whenever God sent a warning and the children of Israel did not heed to the warning. Uh -huh. Somebody lost their life. Yeah. 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 Here you is out there. No mask on. You indivisible. You ain't even got the company of God on you. And who you think, how you think you gonna stand up? <laughs> Take your whole family out. I saw the killer. You can't even see. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. The Bible says Satan was very clever. Then in the beast of the field, he transformed himself. Y'all, y'all understand? He transformed himself to an angel of life. Because what he's trying to do, he's trying to take you out. So guess what? He appears to be God. But because you don't have no distinction, because you don't have no Holy Spirit that's leading you, your flesh has always led you. You can't tell the real from the unreal. You can't tell the anointed from an imitator. Oh, y'all right this year. You, you just want to feel good. You just want to plead. I want to pray. I want to do it. Baby, what are you doing? And how much time do you have left? That's what I'm thinking about now. I can't speak for nobody else. I'm thinking about how much time I got left. <laughs> friend of mine, friend of mine, man. two friends of mine. I mean, I'm just things are happening, man. That I, I could never imagine happening. One of my good friends, just, just, just. I mean, I know him, man, and just, just, just killed his girlfriend. How did we get here? And let me tell you how we get here. When you take the focus off God, destruction is on the way. I'm going to say it one more time. Thank you, no amen. When you take your eyes off of God and what he's doing, when you don't realize that you are not your own, when you start leaning to your own understanding, destruction is on the way. So I honor God. With my talent, with, with my gifts, not say with my gift, with my temple, with my temple. I honor him. I honor him with my talent. I honor him with my body. Then guess what? I honor him with my treasure. Hey. <laughs> come on, come on. Say treasure. Treasure. That's my finances. Let me tell you something. Some of us are in a predicament right now because we don't honor God with our finances. The Bible says, bring all the tithes to the storehouse. There might be resources in my house. The Bible will tell you to put up, take, look at the end. Look at the end. How he stores up for the winter. And here you are. Everything you've got from paycheck to paycheck. And now that there's a famine, you don't have nothing. All that money has came through your hand. It's in Gucci. It's in Prada. It's in weed. It's in nail. It's in shoes. A car you can't pay. Living in a house you can't afford. Trying to impress people. And now you're in a rut. Come on. The only way you feel good, you got to have something on that's a name brand. But let me tell you something. I'm made with the image of God. 
God, whatever I put on, I feel good because I know what's inside of me. And what's inside of me is valuable than what's on me. Come on, somebody. Oh, here we are. $300 to show somebody that don't like you what you got. Tell you something. It's how you feel about yourself. Right. I wish I had some real brothers in here. When I used to have, listen here, when I used to have the hair, the good hair, the waves and stuff, let me tell you something. Man, I have no money. Give me a haircut and some clean clothes. I'll walk in like I own the place. <laughs> it's how you feel about yourself. <laughs> Come on, honor God yeah. with your treasure, your finances, yeah. break the ties. Honor God with your substance. Let me tell you something. When rainy days come, you put God in remembrance of what his word said. I am a tithe man. Open up the window. I can say with confidence, you heard me say, sit down the rain. When you know your life has been constructed by God, honor him with everything that you got and you kept your body together, you kept your mind together, you kept your focus together. Guess what? During a pandemic, what you do? Sleep. <laughs> this morning, uh, uh, Aaron, I, uh, I found out what I've been doing during the pandemic. I got on that scale this morning. Uh -huh. I've been eating on this pandemic. <laughs> Man, I've been eating up some stuff down here. I ain't been panicking. I've been just eating. <laughs> I've been eating, eating and sleeping, eating and sleeping, listening to some mushrooms, listening to some tapes. Come on, I've been writing out some stuff. I've been talking about what we're going to do. I've been saying, okay, God, I'm ready. Somebody say, I'm ready. I'm ready. See, 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 there has to be a level of expectation. I go out with the word, and I'm saying stuff like this, God, you said the wealth of the unjust is laid up for the chest. I've been touring some home. I've been watching some stuff. Now is the time. Because God said, did I not say the first shall be last and the last shall be last? Guess what? I said, God, I thank you that some stuff I didn't get. You let the heathens get it. Because guess what they do? They upgraded everything. Come on, countertops. Come on, marble floors. Come on, come on, gold, gold faucets. Come on, toilets that. <laughs> All that good stuff. <laughs> Here you is. I just want a house. I just want a house. I need a house. Need a house. There's a house to live in. But they said, I want the best. <laughs> so since God is transforming some stuff, He already said. And, and, and guess what? The heathen, turn it over, turn it over, turn it over. <laughs> Be faithful over a few things. Come on. I'll make you ruler over me. Pastor, I want to sit down. No, but I, I'm telling you what you got to do now. This is time. You don't need people telling you how to spell it. You go in the Bible and you write all the scriptures there. And then you tell God, say, God, this is here. I got my life in line with this here. It's time for you to open up a door here. It's time for you to give me favor here. It's time for you to give me increase here. They might be lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't lost.
on me. I'm getting ready to live the scripture. Watch me. What my God is able to do. God, he's able to turn some stuff around. God, he's able to turn it to my face. I'm resting. I'm performing. Sometimes what God allows 
He allows crisis to come to elevate us into a testimony. Come on, y'all. God wants you to brag on him. I'm already getting my shirt together. God did it. Yes, Lord. Come on. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. And it's time for us to elevate. It's time for us. I mean, listen, man, time, 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 time. Come on. You know, if I ask you in this room, within this last year, have you, have, you, have you lost somebody you know? Have you seen anybody that's close to you going to be with the Lord? You got a time, too. I mean, I found myself now. I find myself now, John. My son is 14 years old. I, 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 I'm, so, I'm so concerned about my kids. Y'all, you know, this is a pastor moment. Because, you know, I, I think everything is, we want to prepare them for when we're not here. And see, we don't know how long God will have one of us here. So I want to make sure that they are, 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 are solid. In, in, in. And I want to make sure that they know, because if I leave something back, I don't want them to spun it at all. So right now, I'm spending time to say, son, understand this. Only what you do for God is the only thing that's going to matter. That's right. I'm spending time telling him stuff that I wish somebody would have told me a long time ago. Yeah. Everything I'm looking it's not in people. I could have saved myself some heartbreaks and some, some tears and some lonely nights. Everything I needed, God already places in me. I'm looking for people to love me. And God said, just love yourself. I'm looking for people to validate you. And God said to tell you, I already validate you. Why are you listening to their word? Because they were would change, but my word never would change. He swore to Abraham, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. This old man, at an old age, God keeps his word. Now I close. You are not your own. Come on. You are not your own. One day, you got to stand before his God. And you got to give an account. And you ain't going to talk your way out of this. Thing. I gave you time. What did you do with your time? You mean to tell me you going to spend the rest of your time being bitter with somebody? You're going to spend the rest of your time trying to find fault with everybody else? Man, listen, man. Let me tell you something. All of us have some issues we need to deal with. Your issue may not be like my issue, but you got an issue. And if you say you don't have an issue, you are lying. Because see, some of us, we, 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 put, we put people around us that will tell us a lie, won't tell us the truth. The truth is the only thing that sets you free. So I close with it. I close with that. I close, I close with that. So praise the Lord. Come back. Come back. This first Sunday. Come back. Come back. That song you start started singing when we first started this morning. That song. That little song. Take me back. I, I, I want to go back. I, I want to be transparent for a moment. I want to be transformed for a moment. I want to go back to when I first, when I first, when God first touched me. I want to go back. I want to go back to when nothing didn't matter. The only thing that was matter was pleasing God. I wish I had somebody on Facebook say, I want to go back. I want to go back when I just wanted to be saved. I just wanted to please God. I was blocking out everything. It was so, I, 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 God had touched me so much. I saw an insect pass by a rope. I didn't want to kill it. I just said, God made that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's when you first get saved. Yeah. Yeah. All you want to do is please God. And I want to know, is there anybody here today can say, God, just take me back. We got all this church stuff, all this plus stuff, all these folks telling us what to do, how to do this. I just want to go back to being innocent. Yeah. It's when God touched you. That touch, oh my God. Yeah. 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 It's like weights lifted up off of me. Scales fell off my eyes. Yeah. I woke up that next morning and I looked at the trees. The trees 
look different. And I said, look at the trees. They're praising God. It was green. I saw green before, but I never saw that. I looked at the clouds. I just want to go. 20 people on this line. That's how you take me back. Take me back. This little person that called. To the prophet, 
you have manipulated my people. And God said, I am getting ready to expose, to bring down everything that's not of me. God said, you have used tricks and gimmicks. And God said, even a couple prophets I've seen before this year goes out, will literally lose their lives. God said, you can't kick against the prayer. And God said, I've given you time after time. Out of arrogance, out of arrogance and greed and manipulation, have you founded your ministry? You say my name, but God said, I don't even know you. And God said, it's time for you not to come back in a religious sense. Somebody out there that's, that's been to church and you got fed up with church. And God said, the problem is not the church. The problem is you. You're looking at the wrong people. Jesus. Look to me. I am the author and the finisher of your faith. Yeah. I've got to speak this because I feel the Holy Ghost. And God said, tell somebody, you are forgiven. Jesus. But the devil keeps bringing condemnation. He's using people around you to keep you in a stuck position. And God said, I've already forgiven you. It's time for you to forgive yourself. Your mistake is not who you are. And God said, open up your heart and let me in. Two more. God said, there's somebody who has been tormented by the devil. And God said, this devil will not leave your house until you get in a position where you decree and declare the word. And let me tell you something. You can be free, but if the house is still demon possessed, you're still in the bondage. And God says it's time for you to take your all and open up the, tear the pages out of the Bible and put them under the mattress and pray over your house. Anoint your house. Cry out. Put worship in your house. Unplug the TV. No, you can't play that music in my house. Unplug everything. It's time for your house to cry out to God. And then the last thing, God said, if you have been gifted by me, God said, do not misuse the gift. I heard that emotion. I heard God say, do not misuse the gift. Don't use your gift to make people serve you. I heard God. God said, I call you to serve people. I call people to serve you. People are getting stuck on you. And when you see somebody that's around you starting to look like you, you are out of order. God has not made a person in this room for us to dress like, to act like, and to mimic. The only person we should look like is Jesus Christ. Do not get yourself in trouble with God. And let me say this, just because it sounds like God, and just because the name is on the door, don't mean God is in it. There are a lot of false prophets will rise up in this day, in this time. I will be impatient by you not going through the process. They're going to mislead you and you're going to miss God. Hands are lifted one more time. So Father, I have decreed and declared your word today. Bless your people. Bless your people. Somebody's in a whole other religion. And God said, that's not where you should even be in. That's not where you should be in. God said, you tried people, but you didn't try me. And that's why you frustrated, because you tried people, you didn't try me. God said, call my name, and I will answer. So, Father, I pray that today that people are blessed. I pray for trans transformation in our lives today. I pray that this word is not just an ordinary word. This word will touch people's heart and mind. Even once it goes off and it's replayed, it will touch somebody's mind to put them in position with you. Bless our houses, God. Bless my family. I don't want to preach to the whole world. I'm a man of God, but I don't want to preach to the whole world and then lose my own kids, 
lose my cousin, lose my mama, lose my dad. I don't want, I don't want to preach to my house. Help me to win my house, God. Now, Father, we pray in the name that's above every name. It's the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Would you give God a hand clap of praise? Amen. 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 Quickly, quickly, let's get an offering and we're going, we're going, we're going home. We're going to go home because of the communion. Rather than you offering him, we're going home. Amen. Amen. So listen, whatever you have at home, if you got juice, amen. Listen, listen. The Bible said often we do it during remembrance of him. He didn't say it to be this certain kind of this, 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 this. Whatever you have at home, if it's water, a piece of bread, crap, or whatever, let's do communion together. Amen, 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 amen. So listen, the Bible says bring all the tithes to the storehouse that there might be resources in my house and prove me and see what I've not opened up the windows of heaven and pull out blessings that you won't have room to receive. Now listen, listen, even during these times, you still want to be faithful to God. Amen. Whatever comes in your house, you want to share it with God. Bring all the tithes to the storm that may be reached. Prove me and see what I'm not. Oh, but the ones of heaven pour you out a blessing you will have room to receive. Some of you are receiving the provisions of God. Come on. Your unemployment is a provision from God. Your step is a provision from God. Trump ain't done nothing. God touched him to do that. Some of us are still working on our job. So let's make sure that we honor God with our gifts. Do not have a poverty mentality. Amen. Amen. What you sow, guess what? You reap what you sow. Yeah. If all you show is shouting, you're going to reap a good shout. But let me tell you, I'm sowing seed. Because the Bible said money answers everything. I want you to speak in tongues all day. When the light company call you, they're going to say, yeah, blah, 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 but oh, you need to pay your bill. The light's going to be cut off. Amen. Even though this the church still is, is functioning, we still got this to take care of that. So be faithful in your giving. Now, this is First Sunday. I've always asked the members in First Sunday, go above your tithes and offerings. If it's 25, 100, whatever God might put on your heart. Now, there's ways you can give. You can bring it to, the, the, to our corporate office. Uh, on Hamilton Street, or you can put it in the mailbox here at the church, or you can cash out that they all have all the ways on that, uh, text and church and all that. So let's make sure we're being faithful to God. Amen? Amen. 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 God is putting us in position to be the head and not the tail, a living and not a bar. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's stand to our feet as we get ready to give. Amen. 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 Hold, hold your seeds like this and wave them in the air. You've already given this, wave them in the air. And Daddy God, we, we bring the tithes to the storehouse that there might be resources to prove you. And God, you said you open the windows of heaven towards our blessing. And this seed leaves my hand, but it never leaves my life. Even on Facebook Live, even there are people who are looking. Every seed is given. I pray a special blessing over the seed. What we make happen for the Lord, you'll make it happen for us. Somebody is releasing a seed. God said that seed will change your life forever. I feel the anointing. Now, Father, we don't have to do gimmicks or tricks because, God, you said if we'd be faithful over the few things, you would make us ruler over many. Now, Father, as the prophet of this house, I release every seed that's sown this day. I pray for a testimony that will blow our minds. I pray for money coming from places we never thought it would come from. I pray me will give unto our bosoms. I pray a number that can't be numbered. I thank you in advance for our new church. Yes, you told me we get ready to move. Yes, I heard God. He said we get ready to move. Pack up. Yes, it's a church that God already has for us. I see a gymnasium, I see classroom, everything that we desire. Yes, Lord. God said it shall be debt free. Yes, Lord. I know God. Yes. And I said it and I stand behind it. Now, Father, I thank you today. I thank you for these seeds today. I am a cheerful giver. It's in Jesus' name. All the men now space of dogs. Woo! All the men now space of dogs. Woo! I know that they can't be done.
Amen, amen. Give God a hand up of praise. Holy Spirit. And listen, we got one presentation that was coming. Now listen, uh, uh, this month is Nurses Month. Amen. Amen. And we've got some nurses here at the church. Now listen, now, now just because you're not here, we're going to still bless you too. But we have one nurse that's here right now. And we want to bless her. Sandy. She's our church nurse here at the Palace of Praise. Yes. <laughs> we so appreciate her. Pastor tells a story how he prays and you're calling 911. <laughs> and often Sandy's praise is interrupted by others' praise. And so we appreciate you, Sandy, and we love you. So here's just a little thing. Time at the same time. We didn't right now. I just said, can we just wait? No, we ain't waiting on nothing. So we want to tell you, we honor you. We thank you. And some other nurses here at the church, we're going to send you something too. Amen. Come on, let's do our, 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 our communion and then we're going home. Amen. No more Popeyes for me, y'all. Wow. Yeah, I got on a scale today. I've been living. I've been delivered. Amen. I had my Popeyes feast yesterday. That was it. Your own son said enough, Daddy. Everything going on, Lord, you are still watching over and keeping us, Lord. 
But we ask right now that you continue to keep us, Lord, keeping your angels encamped around us, Lord, keeping all safety around us, healthy, Lord, keeping us, just keeping us, Lord. Sometimes when we can't say nothing else, we just call your name, Jesus. 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 We call your name for strength, Lord. Jesus, Lord. We call your name for help, Lord. Jesus, Lord, we call your name for a clear mind right now, Lord. Jesus, Lord, we call your name just for protection right now, Lord. Jesus, in your son Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you that we have took the bread and we have broken the blood and the body, God, that we remember the price you paid for us on Calvary's cross. So, Father, I thank you today that, Father, as we celebrate you, Jesus, we'll never forget what you've done for us, God. Because you live, we can face anything. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Our announcements are coming at this time. Amen and amen. 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 Praise God. Real quickly, wasn't that a wonderful worship service on today? Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise, those that are amongst us. And we thank God for you. We're going to give a hand clap of praise for those that are watching. We know you want to be here. We love you. We miss you so much. We can't wait to um, come back together as a church family. Real quickly, like Pastor stated, we have four ways to give. You can give online by texting GIVE to 281-688-6011. You can also give by PayPal, paypal.me slash praise121. Also, we have Cash App. That's um, the dollar sign, Pop Palace Nation. Or you can also send it to our corporate office, found at 117 West Hamilton Street, Houston, Texas, 77076. And as Pastor has stated multiple times, if you are in need, if you need help, if you need prayer, feel free to call the church or you can call 281-594-2730. We will answer your call. We will make sure that we reach out and contact you and pray with you. And if there's a need, again, we are here to help you. Don't feel ashamed. We are here to help you. That's what the church, that's what the body of God is here for. You can follow us 
And if you have not already, you can follow us or tell your friends and family to follow us on Facebook at Palace of Praise Church Spring, Texas or Palace of Praise Church Cleveland, Texas, depending on where you are. Or if they don't have social media, that's fine. You can always watch our rebroadcast on our YouTube channel at Pop Palace Nation. Um, we put everything that we do online live on our YouTube channel. You can go back and watch as many times as you like. Don't forget our message on today. You are not your own. We thank God for our pastor, and we'll turn it back over to him. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's stand up and be dismissed. I give it was so awesome to be able to come to your household. I pray God's blessings on your life. And let me remind you that tomorrow will be the best day of your life. Amen. Amen. Every day with Jesus gets sweeter than the day before. Amen. 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 Now, Daddy God, we leave the building, but we never leave your faith. Go with the dangerous highways and mountains. Bring us back at the appointed time. We thank you, Father, for allowing us to touch souls in the north, the south, east, west, and nation. We promise to build up your people and never tear them down. Always tell the good news of Jesus Christ. You can trust us with every soul. Now give us traveling grace. Now, Father, help us to be wise. They've opened the city back up, but there's a killer that's on the loose. And he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So, Father, I pray that you seal us with your blood. And, Father, I pray that no evil can overtake us because we are sealed with your blood. And it's in the powerful name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen, amen. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And we love you. And God loves you. And stay connected to God. And remember, God is in control. Have a wonderful day. You are not your own. Amen. Amen.